As an agency, we have always prided ourselves on thinking, where else could we go? I really got started in games, it was for hardcore players. Believe me, 10, 15 years ago, nobody knew this. Um, games were promoted like when they launched, and then we started saying, no, no, if there's a license for a big movie that's going to be a game, you can start way ahead of when that product is launched. Like I said, most of you know that now, but nobody did then. And it, it became a whole trend. Um, and people started thinking about it. Well, and then the game media also was really starting to get going. So somebody asked me, well, what do you mean? When do we do PR? And so I finally produced this graphic, which is no mathematical you know, um, way of analyzing it, except to say that I tried to say, if you look at this, and you were to copy this, and you were to put it on your desk, and you were a marketing person, for every single block that you see, you should be able to get PR for a game. So if you're measuring the PR from somebody that, you, that works for you, or you're measuring yourself, or you're just trying to get ideas, if you are working on a hardcore game <clears throat> for a console or a PC game or an MMO, which is a PC game, you could look at this chart and you could say to yourself, is my PR person getting PR at every single one of these places? And if they're not, you should look for another PR for another PR person. Because we really look at this and we try to get PR every single time you have one of these things happening. So um, the red only indicates big deal, a lot of press, but you should be able to get press all along the way. Things like interviews and Q's and A's might be on an exclusive basis, so you might be just getting one big hit, but at the time, every time you have a red block, you should be getting major amounts of press. You want, or if you're talking to a trade, you want to make sure that the, the industry publication you know, gets an interview that's different than another interview. You want to work with someone to give them something exclusive and give the other major um, sites something else that's exclusive and rotate that back and forth. And you'll find that whoever is working with you that really does work with you, that does take pick up on this and, and is interested in your, your exclusive, um, will get the best service just like you're getting the best service from them. But you do it. So if you had 10 slides, 10 to somebody, 10 to somebody else, and maybe the other six to everybody. And then they have a choice between the six to make it a little bit different. That simple, simple idea will get you more press than blasting all 10 of your, your screens to everybody else. You can even go to the major sites and arrange like for a series or arrange for homepage placement. You can not only get them to do a story, but you can dicker about the placement. And I've actually had people say, you know, tell us more about when you want to release stuff. We'll work with you because sometimes we can coordinate advertising programs and have something alongside of what you do that makes your story more valuable. But what about the guy that designs wallpaper? I was amazed when I went to it and found out they had 14 guys, 14 jobs, they never crossed over, and there was a guy that just did walls and ceilings. They didn't give a whole lot of interviews, but that would have been an interview by itself. And this 14 guys, $14 million was a story we actually pitched to Forbes or Business Week, I forget, but we got them a major spread, I think it was in Forbes, um, with that concept of how the business worked, but when I, and that's why I knew about those different jobs, but each one of those guys and what they did represented something another studio could learn, and now I've talked about one of the reasons that the editorial writes about you, because you can tell something that somebody else can learn from. If you can provide information that somebody else learns from, the editor probably will be happy to take you because you are serving the readers. In fact, if you're looking at something as high end as Business Week or Fortune or Forbes, that's what they tell you. We write and do stories about businesses that our readers can learn from. That's why they read us. So you have to look at that. So each one of these, like for instance, the band, if the band that was chosen to do music in your game really thought about how the music would integrate with the type of, of, of action in your game, that's interesting. Because it's more than just a piece that you pick up and put in there. Doing something like a, a machinima mashup contest gets people involved with products. So anything you can do to get people to become part of you. I mean, you know, when people People don't go to baseball games that have no interest in baseball unless they're interested in meeting somebody at the hot dog stand or something. I mean, you, you want to get them into your product. 
some way and giving them a chance. And everybody looks for their 15 minutes in the sun, so contests are good. Now I'm going to kind of go into some other things that we've done for various games that went outside of what might be obvious. We worked for <coughs> um, a, 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 um, a large publisher that had a horror game. And he talked to us a lot about how the, the darkness of the film, I mean the darkness of the game, was like how a director would bring darkness into a Hollywood film. And so we came up with this idea of going to ask a Hollywood horror director if he would take a look at the game and see if he thought that we had, this game developer, had done a good job of, of making something scary. I mean, Paranova is a good, you know, you can think about that. Why is that scary? I just understand. <laughs> the camera was jiggling and all these other things. There are techniques that are used to make something scary. So this Hollywood director, hey, he was happy to get press for nothing, you know, and he, we said, we think that because you're a Hollywood director, we can get a story in Hollywood Reporter and then the studio was extremely excited, the game studio, because they then got some exposure to Hollywood studios from which they wished to license a game. Traditional games and traditional media. Everything has changed. If you look at this, you can see how different that looks from the original chart I showed you with lots and lots and lots of vertical places. There were probably about 22, I think I counted at one time, vertical boxes, horizontal boxes on that other chart. There's only about seven here. So what does that tell you? You don't have as many opportunities, and you better do a whole lot at this end. <laughs> so you better think about not just one shots, What's but- What's the difference between this title and the other chart? The other one was a traditional gamers hardcore game. Uh, this, this is, is a, a game a... primarily aimed at consumers. So a a movie license. Well, if you, yeah. if you think Facebook about it, game. you know, in IGN, the game media will still do press down here, but USA Today is not going to. Okay? And for a consumer game, you're lucky if you get IGN to do stuff down here, and they're not going to do anything, and also the, sh the development time is shorter too, of course. But, you know, there's not such a thing as a beta of a consumer game, right? I mean, there just isn't such a thing. I mean, internally in the studio there is, but a USA, a Mike Snyder's not going to look at it unless it's something amazing, okay? And he's not going to look at consumer games anyway until they're finished. So the Mike Snyder's, and he, you know, he's the, one of the principal game writers at USA Today, is all about here and here, okay? And he's where you want if you're going to get consumers, or, I mean, there's lots of other people, but this is a good example. He's a really probably the most prestigious, if not maybe the highest traffic place. And we're going to do various contests that really help promote and get people go back. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> contests are really big, of course, for football. Okay, um, this is about promoting the, the independent studio. You can do stuff in local newspapers. If you need funding, we can get you into the VC trades because they are interested in how other people um, do things so you can pitch what you're good at. This was a pitch that we did, among others, for vicarious visions about how you do mobile games. And eventually Activision acquired Vicarious because of all the press we got for them because they were so good they didn't want anybody else to contract with them. 